Oh. oh, sweet concrete. Welcome back to the farm, everybody. I'm on vacation now, so we are completely done in the fields until harvest time. So to kick off my vacation, we're doing concrete today. Well, and probably some other stuff too. I haven't decided yet, I'm on vacation. I can do whatever I want to do. So that means I can wear socks and sandals if I want to. Okay, while Cole is trying to justify the socks and sandals, I'm over here checking out the pouring of the concrete process. And she's filling! There goes number one. Unfortunately for us, we're only doing one concrete pour today because it's supposed to be like 95 degrees out, so this is the pad for the leg. Or in other words, it's the pad for that thing that we're gonna be moving over here. This is the tool we call the donkey dong. Basically on a vibrator, and you put it in the concrete, it vibrates, gets all the air bubbles and stuff out of stuff, and that's what $1,200 of concrete looks like. Careful there, job supervisor. <laughs> Don't break it, Neva. Now, as per usual, we had something else come up. Welcome to the lawyer's office. Cool. All right, how's it going? Good. I, I have to let you know I'm going to be recording for quality assurance purposes. Oh, quality assurance purposes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't think he was ever going to let me leave. Hello. Hey, this is Cole. We got a grave for Friday, and I was wondering if you would be around in the morning where we could uh, mark that out, because there's no stone there. You'll see up there by 8 o'clock. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Alright, bye. I have two graves this week while Dad's gone on vacation. I've dug hundreds of graves in my lifetime, but finding the spot where it's supposed to go and knowing the exact area, Dad's always taken care of that. And Dad's always ran the backhoe. I take that back. Cooper and I did dig one by ourselves one time, but that one is already marked out ahead of time. So anyway, I'm in charge of grave digging stuff this week. So I have a cremation in a full size. So I got some people I need to meet in the morning so that way we can get those taken care of. I guess we're gonna have to figure it out. Ladies and gentlemen, I am excited to announce that today's video is sponsored by Bespoke Post. Hey Neva, if you can make a bullseye by the time I get done with this sponsor segment, I'll give you 500 bucks. Can we shake on it? You're on. Bespoke Post is a monthly membership club delivering top shelf brands from under the radar companies. And the best part is, it's completely free to join. Here's how it works. Go to bespokepost.com, click on get started, and then tell them about yourself. And then Bespoke Post will line up the box of best tailored to your interests. Each month I'm assigned a preview of a brand new box. I can either keep it, I can swap it for a new one, I can skip for the month, completely free of charge, or I can cancel. So unlike Christmas with my Aunt Betty, I only pay for what I actually want. Hey Neva, how you making out? I'm doing good, I'm doing good. We're almost there. What are you doing? You're wasting time, Cole. Since I like to go over the top, I got the Terra box, the carnivore box, and the trail box. Ooh. First item in the box is this knife, and this just isn't a knife. This is a knife. I really like how this thing's got a serrated edge on the one side so I can cut through sticks and stuff if I need to, but I can also slice through things as well. Unless I'm in the garden and I want to plant something to a certain depth, I got gauge markers on the back, and oh hey, got a hammer right on the back side. Oh, just talking about all this hard work makes me feel dirty, but good thing they sent a bar of soap. But this is the good soap. This doesn't have any synthetic dyes in it. It's not full of parabens, phthalates, or sulfates. No! And one of my favorite things about Bespoke Post is sometimes in a box, you get maybe one thing that you're kind of interested in, such as this bird call here, so. Hey, Neva, I thought you were playing darts. I'm distracted. Is that for food? Let me see, let me see, let me see. I'm a big meat guy, so I got a barbecue rub here and I got a recipe for it. Now the food's good and all, but sometimes there's just not much better than having a good meat cleaver. This is sick. This feels like a solid piece of equipment here. Nice and heavy, smooth feeling handle. Babe. Look what I got. This is fun. Command wire saw. This is, I can get a tree with this. <gasps> this is a knife. That's not a knife. This is a knife. <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. Sharp, I like that. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> ah, you're smart. This is a paracord bracelet. This is awesome. This, this will, 
This thing will come in handy. Hey, can I put my stuff in there too? Nope, nope, just my stuff. So if you guys are interested in checking out Bespoke Post, be sure to enter the code CORSAR20 through the link in the description and you can get 20% off at checkout. And time! No, I wasn't <laughs> finished. Oh. <laughs> Pay up. Good effort, good effort. Thanks. You still love me though, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> We're gonna try to work swiftly and crisply today. They're talking a heat index of 105 degrees, so I don't really wanna be out and about in that. I'm gonna try to dig both graves today. We have a cremation and a full size. I'm actually on the way to the mechanics right now to go pick up the bobcat, because we've been having some issues with it lately, but the parts aren't in, so hopefully we don't break anything more. For whatever reason, the left side track here just has a mind of its own and you can't keep it still because it wants to sit there and just keep turning on itself. So we're not really sure what's wrong. Hopefully it's nothing too big, cause uh, parts for that skid loader are expensive. I forgot my camera, but we got a duck. You know it's hot when I sweat through a shirt, cause I don't really sweat. I didn't even shut the truck off so I could keep the air running, and oh man, that feels good. favorite activity. It's kind of terrifying. You feel like you're gonna flip over backwards and you can't really see. So far my first solo grave digging adventure, job, I, I don't know what you'd want to call it. Experience. Experience has not been off to the best start. On the way here, I got Neva behind me. There was a car behind Neva and we just popped over hill and I have to make a turn at the bottom of the hill. And a car decides he's gonna fly over the hill and pass all of us as I'm turning left. So he may or may have gotten flipped off. But then we get here to the cemetery and dad sent me a text saying that the stone is here, the names are on it and stuff. So. I'm looking around, Neva's looking around. We ended up walking every single row here, and by the way, it's 105 degrees out, and we couldn't find it. So I called the guy who runs the books here at the cemetery. He's on vacation in Colorado. So we called the backup guy, and first thing he says to me is, oh, I don't have the books for that cemetery. <laughs> so anyway, we finally got a hold of a family member. We figured out where it's gonna be here. So now we need to probe through this rock hard ground and can we get this thing dug? Like I said, I've dug hundreds of graves in my lifetime. I've been doing this my entire life, but dad's always done the marking out part, which is the hard part. And that's what we're doing right now. So I have my probe here. So we're gonna stick this into the ground. There's someone buried here, but we need to find where the edge of their casket is. So that way we know where we need to put the new one because down the road here, there's future lots where these people are still alive, but when they're buried in the future, they need to be able to fit into their designated area. So that's why we need to make sure we're in the right spot now. And sometimes you say you're probing and they're cremated and you don't know it. So you probe for a long time. Dirt is potting soil right now. Well, I guess there's a little bit of moisture in it, but we're definitely starting to get pretty dry, especially on the top bit. That is as hard as a rock. We could use the rain. That was smart. Well, good morning, everybody. It is 4.48 in the morning. We're gonna be here in 12 minutes starting concrete, I guess, for the last 120,000 bushel bin pad pour. It is 76 degrees right now, 
at 96% humidity. Holy smokes, it's hot. You ready to pour some concrete? Good morning, sir. How you doing? <laughs> what do we know today? I don't know. Here's the first truck. Hey! Hey! How can we be here at 5 when you call it 10 minutes still? <laughs> here it comes. And there's truck number two. Gonna be pouring about 105 yards of concrete or 11 trucks. Yeah. First truck dumped at 5.30. It's 6.52 right now. We just got a little bit left. Adam, did somebody have too much cola before they went to bed? Your adult diaper's not working. I try, I try. I still, I still leak through. I'm not even gonna try to make something up where I did something crazy spectacular today and I got all sorts of work done. As soon as these concrete guys got done pouring today, I went in the house, I took a shower, and I sat in the air conditioning because it was hot and I was tired. And I actually took like a three hour nap. But it actually worked out fairly good because I had a lot of office stuff I had to take care of. I had a lot of sponsor stuff for YouTube that I had some obligations that I needed to get done. Normally I don't mention this stuff, but I really want you guys to feel a part of the farm because you guys are a part of the farm. And there's a lot of stuff that we do that we don't talk about on YouTube, such as the work involved with YouTube and all that sponsorship stuff entails and things like that. I got a bunch of dirt in my sandals here. And also things like the book work and how we make decisions around here. We usually just leave that stuff off, but I don't know. I, I kind of want to incorporate that stuff more in. I think you guys might find that really interesting. There may be some videos or parts of the video that are a little bit slower than I normally try to pace them because I find if I just sit and talk and talk and talk, it gets rather boring versus if there's just a bunch of action going on. I would appreciate some feedback on your guys' end if you want me to incorporate some of that or if you want me to try some of it and see what you think, I, I'm more than willing to. Now, the reason why we came out here this second pad here has been poured for about 12 hours now. I think it, it should be safe to walk on it. Holy smokes, this thing is hot. It literally feels like an oven. Just the concrete alone in this very bin right here was about $11,000. So between these two bins, you're looking at $22,000 in concrete. That's not including lime, that's not including any of the dirt work or the rebar or the labor involved. But I am really glad we have these poured now because there's gonna be about 7 million pounds of corn on top of these. So we wanna make sure these have nice cure time before we put anything on here because we don't want this concrete to get pr stressed prematurely. Is that a thing? And then it, it would crack out and lose its structural integrity. So right now it's the end of July. We're not gonna be putting anything in here till probably about the middle of October. So should have really good drying time, should be good and hard and cured by then. Just to give everyone a little recap of what all these concrete pads are for, these two big ones are for the 120,000 bushel bins. That structure over there is where the 480 electricity is going to come in. So we're gonna have all of our electrical boxes there. That back one is for the dryer. And then we're gonna have the hopper bottom bin here. This is where it's gonna hold wet corn. And then those forms there is where our leg is going to go. And then the rest of the stuff's not poured yet. By not poured yet, I mean we have our dryer shack, which will be right here. It'll be 16 feet wide and 30 feet long. We'll have a little transformer box. So we'll have a 110 converter going from there to here. So we'll have a little pad for that to sit on. We still need to pour an area back there where we're going to have our LP tanks to sit on. And then we're going to have 30 foot approaches on both sides of the pit here for the semis. And those will be concrete as well. And then last but not least, we still need to pour the footings and then the little leg that'll come up for the overhead bend that'll be over the pit. So we don't have a long way to go, but at the same time, we have a long way to go. And then from the sounds of it, next week, the bend crew is supposed to show up. And I think they're gonna start with the first 120,000 bushel bend, if I'm not mistaken. And then they're gonna build the 18 foot overhead, the 5,000 bushel overhead loadout on the 30 foot pad here. And then they'll be able to lift it up with the crane and set it up on top of the pit. And then at some point, they're going to be lifting the leg 
and the hopper bottom over here. So that's gonna be kind of cool because I have no idea how they're gonna do it. Take a good look, ladies and gentlemen, because before long, there's gonna be giant skyscraper bends right here. And it's hard to imagine that just a, a couple months ago, there was nothing out here at all. <laughs> wow. Let's take a moment of silence, guys. Today's our last day of vacation. And we're gonna be spending it on the roof. We already got this side done and we just got this side over here to go. Well, hello, and now what are you doing here? Huh? Whoa, oh, Dad, you got some new shoes. I did, I bought them on the truck. Usually when I get done working for the day, I feel like I didn't get a whole lot done, but today I actually feel like we got something done because we got the roof done. And you guys know what that means. We're ready for siding. But I doubt we're gonna get to that next weekend because we're supposed to be pouring the dryer shack this week. So we're probably gonna be framing up the building for that next weekend when Justin's here. So the siding once again, is gonna be put on hold. Yay, I almost forgot to mention, while Justin and Austin were putting all the capping and valley stuff on the roof, I was down here cleaning around the LP tanks and or along the side of the garage here. I have never seen underneath those LP tanks before. So, that's new to me. I like it. I got a couple hours of daylight left, so I'm gonna spend it here in the bend site. We got the bend crew coming this week to be putting up these bends. And I wanna make sure everything is back here is clean. It just seems like if you have a clean working environment, everyone picks up after themselves, you know, a bunch of trash and stuff laying around. I don't know, I guess you just kind of treat stuff a little bit different. Same concept we have behind why we keep our tractors and our trucks and everything else so clean. Solid vacation week, guys. We got the roof done on the house, well, on the porch. We got a bunch of concrete stuff done over here. I believe tomorrow the Ben crew is supposed to come out and we're supposed to start erecting bends. I got junk guys coming out later, hopefully this week, maybe next week. I don't know, they keep saying next week, so we know how that goes. But they're supposed to come pick up all this stuff out here. Got some good mowing done. Just a beautiful night to stand up here right now. A lot of people say the country is boring, but I don't know. I would have to disagree. Well, that's pretty much all I have for this video. Remember, if you guys enjoyed, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, well, be sure to hit the subscribe button. That way you're notified when I post new videos. And other than that, thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next one.